yeah if everyone can just settle down very quickly uh let's start once again so before the break we were looking at um the rapture immediately after the rapture you have the tribulation period starting and we see that the tribulation happens in three stages you have the seven seals being opened um then you have the seven trumpets during which time uh different portions of creation starts getting destroyed and then there's a the last stage of tribulation when the seven bowls of wrath are poured out so after these three stages of the tribulation period get completed then jesus will come back he will come down upon the mount of olives and this is known as the second coming so when the second coming takes place you will again have a, another kind of resurrection event taking place if you remember when the rapture took place two sets of people got uh, resurrected received their resurrected bodies one was all the believers who have already died who are coming with the lord in the air they will first receive their resurrected bodies the second set of people who received their resurrected bodies were the ones who are still alive even as they are rising up into the air in the twinkling of an eye their physical bodies will be changed into resurrected bodies so those two sets of people received their resurrection event at the time of the rapture now when the second coming happens after the tribulation period you have another two set of people receiving their resurrected bodies who are these people um the first will be the ones who are mentioned in daniel chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 daniel 12 1 and 2 what does it say daniel chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 at that time michael shall stand up the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time and at that time your people shall be delivered every one who is found written in the book and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life some to shame and everlasting contempt here it's talking about the old testament people in daniel 12 it talks about a tribulation period it says there will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then okay so it talks about the tribulation period and then it says after the tribulation period then multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake some to everlasting life others to shame and everlasting contempt so now at this point of time when the second coming takes place you will have um, many of the old testament believers being granted their resurrected bodies so which basically means at the time of the rapture it is only the church um, you know the the church which was formed after the um, after the ascension of jesus christ that church alone would receive its resurrected bodies whereas here after the tribulation at the time of the second coming you have the old testament saints also receiving their resurrected bodies um so this is the belief of people who interpret daniel 12 1 and 2 in this particular way there are some other people who will say no 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 this is not a separate event even the old testament saints will receive the the resurrection uh, during the rapture is what some other people say all right so there are two different views about when the old testament saints would receive their resurrected bodies this is a second set of people who will receive their resurrected bodies at this time after the tribulation period this is mentioned in revelation 20 verses 4 and 5 revelation 24 and 5 who are the second set of people who receive the resurrection uh, their resurrected bodies now at the time of the second coming revelation chapter 20 verse 4 and 5 and i saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them 
Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded, beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live, uh, live again until the thousand year were finished. This is the first resurrection. So now here it's talking about uh, the, the people who became believers after the rapture of the church. So everyone who was a believer up to that point of time is caught up in the air with the Lord and they are taken to heaven. But after that, once the tribulation time begins, there will be people who will accept the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior. Those believers who are known as the tribulation believers, the tribulation saints, these people will undergo a lot of persecution during that time. And many of them will be martyred. Many of them will die. All of these people who have died will now receive their resurrected bodies. So it says over here, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony. These people, it says, they came to life and they reigned with Christ a thousand years. And then we are given a small footnote, you know, in, in, in verse 5, Revelation 20 verse 5, it says, the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended which means there's going to be another resurrection event taking place at the end. So basically the resurrection is received by different sets of people at different points of time. Two sets of people receive it at the, during the rapture. Two sets of people will receive it at the time of the second coming. And then you will have a final uh, set of people who will be resurrected at the very end. So at this point of time, after Jesus Christ has, uh, you know, uh, has come, uh, the second coming has taken place, and then uh, the these people are uh, receive their resurrected bodies. During this time, is probably when the believers will be judged. We are not told details about exactly when the judgment of the believers will happen. The exact timing, we are not told, but the general belief is that. At this time of the second coming, when Jesus comes, around that time, he probably judges the believers, including the ones you know who have been raised up uh, from the um, who, have, who, who have received their resurrection bodies after the tribulation period. So the judgment of the believers will include all those who were taken up at the rapture. It will also include the people who went through the tribulation period for the sake of the Lord and were martyred. It will include even the Old Testament saints. All of these people will now undergo a judgment of the believers. Why do why do why do why do Christians say that the white throne judgment at the very end is going to be different from the event when the believers get judged? Why do they say that, that there are two separate judgment events? It's because of the uh, verse which is mentioned in 2 Corinthians 5.10. Okay, so 2 Corinthians 5.10 and Revelation 20.11, they say, talk about two separate judgment events. So let's first look at 2 Corinthians 5.10. What does it say over there? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Here in 2 Corinthians 5.10, it's talking about a particular judgment event. It says over here that uh, these people will receive what is due for the things that were done while in the body. So it's talking about a certain judgment event. And then Revelation 20.11 talks about the other judgment event, Revelation 20, 11. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and, and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for him. 
Now, there are okay. some people who will say that both of these judgments, the judgment of the believers and the judgment of the unbelievers, will all happen at one single timing. But most of the church uh, believes that there will be two separate judgments, one for the believers, one for the unbelievers. Why do they say that? Because you see in 2 Corinthians 5.10, it's talking about a different kind of a judgment seat. And in Revelation 20, 11, it's talking about a different kind of a judgment seat. In 2 Corinthians 5, 10, it talks about how we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And the word, the Greek word used over there is bema, bematos, B-E-M-A-T-O-S. Whereas in Revelation 20, 11, it does not talk about bematos. It, it talks about a different kind of a judgment seat. That is the great white throne. So based on this, because there are two different types of judgment seats being talked about, most of the church, most of the church believes that there are two separate judgment events. And they're not saying it just on the basis of the kind of judgment seat. A second difference that we see is that when you look at the 2 Corinthians 5.10 passage, over there it's talking about believers getting judged. On the other hand, when you look at the Revelation 20.11 event, over there you basically have all the um, unbelievers getting judged. So even the people who are getting judged are two separate categories of people. So therefore they say 2 Corinthians 5.10 is talking about a different event and Revelation 20, 11 is talking about a different event. The third difference that we see between these two passages is that the kind of judgment which is being issued is also different. If you look at 2 Corinthians 5, 10, it's talking about how people will be given rewards based on the things which they have done while they were alive in the body. On the other hand, if you look at the Revelation 20 event, there basically the judgment is, are you going to heaven or are you going to hell? So based on these three differences, the kind of judgment seat, the second one, um, the kind of people who are being judged, the attendees who are being judged, and third, the very subject of judgment, what exactly is being judged? Because of the difference in these three areas, it, the general belief is that 2 Corinthians 5.10 is talking about the judgment of believers, whereas Revelation 20.11 is talking about the judgment of unbelievers. Let's look at this in, a, in slightly greater detail. 2 Corinthians 5.7.2. I have a question, sister. Yes, go ahead. Sister, you know, um, God will release Satan after... 1,000 years, he's bound, uh, he will be bound at no, the time. No, 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 it's not at all clear. Can you, um, no, can you, can you speak louder? Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'll, I'll put my ear closer to the thing so that I can hear. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. One minute, I'll increase the volume of my phone. Can you hear now? Oh, yes, I can hear you now. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Sister, uh, God will uh, release Satan after 1,000 years, right? Uh, after the millennium period. Mm. Is it for the believers or unbelievers? Who will be living? Satan will be released, right? He's, uh, he will be bound during that uh, time, 1,000 years. Right. During the millennial time. Mm. But then he will be released. And you said then during the tribulation period, the believers... Uh, God will uh, also, so there will be a lot of believers, God will take them, rapture them. But uh, the Satan will be released, is he for believers or for unbelievers? Yeah, we'll get to that, uh, you know, when we move forward a little more. Right now, we have only talked about rapture, which is for the believers. Okay, okay. rapture is for the believers. The people who got saved during the tribulation period, they are not uh, the, you know, the traditional church of God. The church of God gets raptured before the tribulation itself. In the okay. tribulation time, you would have new people who choose to become followers of the Lord Jesus. 
so those people there's no rapture event for them they don't rise up into the air nothing like that the okay. second coming at the end of the tribulation period the second coming happens when jesus comes and sets his feet on the mount of olives at that time he will raise the people who have been beheaded who have been martyred who have been killed for the name of jesus all those people will receive their resurrection bodies at that point of time so there's no rapture happening at that time jesus christ has come back he is now on the earth and he will do this for the tribulation believers who have died so they will receive their resurrection bodies at that point of time and some people say that the old testament saints will receive their resurrection bodies at that point of time when the second coming takes place so there's no rapture happening again only okay. the second coming is happening okay so let's get that okay. clear and yeah we will talk about this millennium thing in a short while all right we will okay. definitely okay sister okay so now after this tribulation saints have received their resurrected bodies after the old testament saints have received their resurrected bodies now you basically have four categories of people who have received their resurrected bodies they will undergo something called the judgment of believers which will take place uh, before the bematos of christ the judgment seat of christ this greek word bematos refers to um a, a word which was used in jesus times it refers to a roman tribunal a roman court of justice that word bema literally talks about a a raised platform or it can talk about a court of justice let's actually look at one example uh, acts chapter 18 verse 12 acts 18 verse 12 Acts chapter eighteen verse twelve. When Gallio was proconsul of Acacia, the Jews with with one accord rose up against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. Okay, it says over there that you know, in, in this is basically in Corinth uh, when when uh, opposition is happening against Paul, uh, he is brought. Paul is brought to be judged. He is brought to the judgment seat. that word over there is bema that's basically a, like it's like a raised platform so the the literally the, the 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 platform on which the judge sits that is called bema but there's another way that you can understand the word bema not only is it just the platform on which he sits it's also the name which is given for the court of justice the roman tribunal used to be called bema so if you were to look at the niv translation of the same verse it says um uh, they made a united attack on paul and brought him to the place of judgment so in the nkjv that word bema is translated as judgment seat in the niv that same word bema is translated as place of judgment so basically the, the bema is talking about the seat the platform on which the judge is sitting it also refers to the actual court the court of justice that's also called bema so here in second corinthians 5:10 this is the word which is used that believers will stand in front of the uh, the uh, in front of the bema of jesus christ and the judgment will be basically for the things which they have done while they were living in the body um so let's look at that passage you know in with in uh, slightly greater detail second corinthians 5 all the way from verse 7 up to verse 10 second corinthians 5 7 to 10 second corinthians chapter 5 7 to 10 for we walk by faith not by sight we are confident yes well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the lord the judgment seat of christ therefore we make it our aim whether present or absent to be well pleasing to him for we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done whether good or bad so over here when people uh, it's it's believers who are coming over here 
because it says it's talking about people who will live by faith and not by sight it's clearly referring to believers who will come and stand before the bema of jesus christ and it says that these people will receive what is due for the things done while in the body so when we come and stand before the bema of jesus christ he's not going to be telling us whether we are going to go to hell or heaven no salvation has already been received all the believers have been sealed with the holy spirit who has been given to us as a guarantee that now we are children of god so that guarantee has already been given to us here the judgment which is being done is not about whether you will go to heaven or hell rather the judgment which is being done over here is regarding how did you live did you live by faith or did you be live by sight because believers who live by sight will only obey the lord and submit to him and things are going well when things are are, are very confused you know they don't have the faith to to hold on they live the way the world is living so on that day when we are standing before the bema of jesus christ how have we lived we will be judged regarding that what kind of a lifestyle did we have what choices did we make did we continue to hold on by with faith to jesus even when things did not make any sense did we continue to obey him did we continue to honor him those are the things which will will get judged and we will receive rewards based on that those who have been more faithful will receive a greater reward those who have lived by sight and have not been faithful they will receive a lesser reward so this is explained to us further in 1st corinthians chapter 3 verses 13 to 15 1st corinthians 3 13 to 15 first corinthians chapter 3 verse 13 to 15 each one's work will be become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is if any one's work which he has built on it endures he will receive a reward if any one's work is burned he will suffer loss but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire so here it says the fire will test the quality of each person's work so when we are standing there in front of the bema of jesus christ it's like as if god is placing everything that we did you know he's placing it inside a fire and the fire will burn up everything which is not of lasting value only what is of lasting value in the eyes of god only those things will survive so the things which we did sincerely to honor him things that we did you know stepping out in faith things that we did by the power and grace of the lord those things will will be able to survive the fire everything else will get burnt up but this one assurance we are given in first peter 117 this is what we are promised uh, you know if we can read out that first peter 1 verse 17 first peter chapter 1 verse 17 and if you call on the father who without partiality possibility judges according to each one's work conduct yourself throughout the time of your stay here in fear in first peter 117 you know this is the advice which peter gives to his readers he says live in this world like as if you're a foreigner like as if you don't even belong over here live as a live as a foreigner in reverent fear because the father is, will judge each person's work impartially so it doesn't matter if you know if you're a world class preacher whose name everybody knows or whether you're in you're a, you're a person working in some rural area where nobody even knows you the father will judge each person impartially so based on how you have lived you have if you have lived by faith and not by sight and you have really chosen to follow him your reward will be great because the lord is very impartial in the way he judges his people he will treat everyone equally everyone will be given fair judgment on that day this another thing that we see uh, regarding this bema judgment um revelation 198 if if someone could read out revelation chapter 19 verse 
unto her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen clean and bright for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints it talks about a uh, very high quality linen cloth robes which will be given to the believers these are not ordinary kind of clothes it's fine linen bright and clean and it represents the righteous acts which the people have done see there are, so which means there are two kinds of you know clothing spiritual clothing that we would be wearing the one that we are aware of is the robe of righteousness which you know which christ has given every single believer that we see in isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 let's actually look at that first uh, isaiah 61 verse 10 Isaiah chapter sixty one verse ten, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he shall for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, and has the bright groom this himself with the ornaments and and has a bright odd ornaments. herself with her jewel so here in isaiah 61:10 it's talking about the garments of salvation and the robe of his righteousness which is given to every single believer all of us are basically spiritually clothed in it right now every one of us is wearing the garments of salvation every one of us has been you know uh, uh, has been decorated with his robe of righteousness we all are wearing this already but on that day you know in the, in the after the second coming happens on that day fine linen bright and clean is given to specific people because that represents the righteous acts which they did so it's a kind of reward an honor that is given to people uh, you know who have uh, served him very very sincerely so we see that um this judgment of the believers which takes place is not to tell people whether they'll go to heaven or hell because all believers will definitely go to heaven but it's basically talking about how you will be granted a reward based on how you have lived those who have served the lord faithfully will receive a greater reward those who have been faithless will receive a very very less a small very small reward so that is regarding the judgment of the believers so we don't really know exactly when this judgment will take place the assumption is that it it will most probably happen once the second coming of christ you know uh, it, it takes place and then uh, the tribulation people receive their resurrected bodies so maybe at that point of time is when this judgment of believers will happen and um we are also told that the marriage supper of the lamb will take place after the second coming uh that we see in revelation 19 verses 6 to 8 revelation 19 6 to 8 revelation chapter 19 verse 6 to 8 and i heard as it were the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thundering saying alleluia for the lord god omnipotent reigns let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen clean and bright for the fine linen is the righteous act of the saints so when the marriage supper of the lamb happens the bride the church comes for the marriage ceremony wearing the fine linen which you know they have earned of course we are all clothed in the garments of salvation we all are wearing the robe of his righteousness that we are anyway clothed with but we also will have the fine linen which represents the righteous acts which we have done so decorated in this way adorned in this way we will come for the marriage uh, ceremony 
we will be a worthy bride who deserves to have you know uh, the lord jesus as her bridegroom so we will come prepared in that way so everything that we do during the week things which seem so average which seem so insignificant those righteous acts actually have great value in god size you know when you're in the kitchen and it's so hot and you're you know doing all the works which need to be done over there you're doing it for the lord you're serving people in this world only money matters status matters people don't care what you do in the kitchen but the lord who is watching sees whether you're doing it righteously with a cheerful godly heart with a heart to serve you know the 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 basic things that we do in ministry the admin tasks you know ringing up people finding out you know uh, the the cost of so and so you know the arrangements you make i mean preaching and sharing the gospel is important but the other admin tasks they seem like so such a waste of time you know ringing up people taking quotations uh, you know reminding somebody to bring the chairs for the meeting all that seems so unnecessary but those are righteous acts which you are doing because you want to serve god you're doing these things to help people god is watching the world doesn't care about what you're doing because the small things don't count to the you know in the world's eyes but the god who is watching will reward you one day for the smallest most insignificant things because in your eyes they may be insignificant but he is seeing with what heart attitude you're doing it and if you're doing it to honor him he will greatly reward you one day for it okay so when you come there you know as the bride you're wearing those that fine linen and you know you're showing everyone this is the way i served him with all my heart honoring him lifting him high in the smallest things which i did not only when i was on the stage preaching but in all the other things and it it's greatly honoring you know uh, for the to the lord in his eyes so the bride is supposed to prepare herself in that way for this marriage supper of the lamb so immediately after this marriage supper of the lamb uh, you know is finished then god will wage the war the war of armageddon uh, that entire passage talks about that revelation 19 all the way from verse 11 up to verse 21 it talks about um how he will come on a white horse um it says in verse 11 with justice he judges and wages war um in uh, verse 15 it says he treads the wine press of the fury of the wrath of god almighty so the the judgment of god which has been waiting patiently through the ages it will be released at that point of time the entire wrath of the almighty god will come down upon the people who have refused to accept him um and then an angel will cry out loudly in verse 17 and 18 it says you know he say, he will say to the birds of the air there are going to be so many dead bodies lying on the ground that you know all the uh, all the birds can come and feast upon these dead bodies is what the angel will say and then at the end of the war of armageddon we should probably just take a few minutes because how long does the lord need to you know defeat the peoples of the world so at the end of the war it says in uh, verse 19 okay maybe someone can read out that revelation 19 uh, verses 19 to 21 revelation 19 19 to 21 revelation chapter 19 verse 19 to 21 and i saw the beast the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in the pre- in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped in his image these two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with bronze stone and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse and all the birds were filled with their flesh 
so at the end of the war of armageddon the antichrist and the false prophet who was backing him up all these days these two will be thrown into the lake of fire okay so um, judgment is brought upon the antichrist and the false prophet and all the armies you know which were trying to all the people of the earth who were following them and who wanted to wage a war against god they all will be judged and once the judgment is finished then the thousand year rule of christ will begin on this earth so at this point of time you have a series of things taking place um four five yeah five five main events take place during this thousand year rule um maybe first we can look at isaiah chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 isaiah chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 Isaiah chapter two, verse three and four. Many people shall come and say, "Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways, and we shall walk in His paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their sword into plowshares." and their spears into pruning hooks nation shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war any more if you notice all the people who opposed god have already been have all been killed i mean they either died of old age in the earlier years or at least in the time of this war of armageddon they all were killed so now they are all you know in in hell so at this moment at this point of time on the earth who is left it's only the believers the people in their resurrected bodies who have come down with christ at the second coming you know the tribulation saints who have been raised up from the dead and who have also received their resurrection bodies it's basically the believers who are now populating the entire earth and these believers are saying to each other in isaiah chapter 2 verse 3 they are saying come let us go up to the mountain of the lord you know they want to worship the lord they want to be in his presence so it's basically the godly people who are now living during this thousand year rule and therefore there is no longer any warfare it says that the nations will no longer take up a sword against each other and then it says he will judge between the nations and will settle disputes so people will come to the lord with them with their various issues he will give them just and fair judgment and so justice will be prevailing throughout the entire earth this will be a time of great peace so there will be some tribulation saints who did not get beheaded who did not die and were who are not martyred the dead ones will receive a resurrected body but those who are still alive at that point of time they will still be in their physical bodies such godly people will continue to get married will continue to have children during this 1000 years now the children will have to make a decision for themselves are they going to follow this lord jesus or is there another option which they are considering in their hearts okay so um, we'll we'll get to that in a little while um, so the first thing that we see is that you have godly people living there is no warfare there is peace the second thing that we see is that um isaiah chapter 11 verses 6 to 9 um yeah if if someone could read out that isaiah 11 6 to 9 as a chapter 11 69 the all also shall dwell with the lamb the leopard shall lie down with the young god the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them the cow and the bear shall graze their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox 
the nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Exactly, it says over here that during this time there will be no harm, there will be no destruction. It says a young child can actually put its hand into the viper's nest and the snakes will not bite it. It talks about how the lion will eat straw, it will not attack other animals. It talks about how the wolf will lie down next to the lamb instead of killing it. You know, so this will be a time of great peace. And why is there so much peace and goodness and you know uh, godliness going on? That is because Satan has been bound. We are told that in Revelation 20 verses 1 to 3. So immediately after the, ba after, after the battle of Armageddon, the Antichrist and the false prophet have now been thrown into the lake of fire. And as for Satan, he has been bound in the abyss for a thousand years. So, which is why there's a great time of peace during this time. And then after the 1000 years, it says in Revelation 20 verse 7, when the, when the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations. So during the 1000 year rule, many children have been born. And now they have to make their own decision whether they are going to follow the Lord or not. So now after 1000 years when Satan comes out, he, he goes out to deceive them. And so now these people have to make a decision. Are we going to stay with the Lord whom we enjoyed for 1000 years? Or are we going to be deceived by this evil one who is tempting us to rebel against God? So we get to know that actually there are some people at that point of time who have chosen to go against God, to rebel against him. It says they marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people. Revelation 20 verse 9 is where it says that. So this last rebellion takes place in Revelation 20 verse 7 to 10. After the 10, after the 1000 years, when some of the people who have been born during that time choose to rebel against God, Satan is able to deceive them. And now they all are judged. It says in Revelation 20 verse 9, here guys, discussion. Revelation 20 verse 9, it says that fire came down from heaven and devoured them. Okay, so they are all destroyed and judged because of the rebellion which they have led. I mean, imagine people who have enjoyed God's, um, you know, uh, pleasure and his protection for 1000 years. What foolishness that they should be deceived by Satan. Anyway, they're all devoured by fire. And then the devil himself in verse uh, 10, he, he also is thrown into the lake of fire. He joins the Antichrist and the false prophet who are already rotting over there, he goes and joins them in the lake of fire. Um, and then after that, we see the great white throne judgment taking place. So at that time, we are told, um, let's look at yeah, Revelation 20 verses 13. 14. Revelation 20, 13 and 14. Revelation chapter 20, verse 13 and 14. The sieve gave up the dead who were in it, and that has that and had delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged each one according to his words. Verse 14. Then death and heads were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So let us understand what is going on over here during the great white throne judgment. All the people who I know have rebelled against God and have died, they all are in a place called Hades. I mean, uh, you know, we, uh, Hades is mentioned even in the Gospels. Hades, you know, uh, is basically 
a place which used to have two compartments in uh, hades is basically the place of the dead the place of the dead has two compartments in one compartment you had godly people living they are called the people in abraham's bosom on the, in the other compartment are all the people who have chosen not to accept the lord jesus so it, it includes old testament people and also new testament people who have rejected yahweh so you have these two compartments at the time of jesus uh, you know um, um, his his resurrection from the dead when jesus rose up on easter day at that time he collects the people who are there in abraham's bosom and he takes them to heaven along with him so now that compartment is empty the good compartment where all the old testament believers were living that is empty but the other compartment you know where you have the people who you know who have rebelled against god living that is basically what we call hell and all those people are still you know all these unbelievers are still there in hell up to the current day so this is like a holding area where unbelievers are being held for judgment and in the deepest part of this hell you basically have some demons also being chained and kept over there we looked at that you know last time when we were covering the topic on angels so all these people they will be ordered to come and stand in front of the great white throne judgment and so at that time all their dead bodies whether it's in the sea or whether it is on the land wherever it is that will be raised up and they will be all these dead people who have who are in hell will be rejoined with their bodies and they will stand in judgment before the great white throne and then god will pass judgment upon each one of them and they will be given different levels of punishment based on how they have lived because we are told right in um, in in the gospels in luke 10 10 to 12 and also in luke 12 47 to 48 we are told that the judgment will be greater for some people and the judgment will be lesser for other people so at the great white throne judgment it is the unbelievers who are standing with their resurrected bodies so now this is the, this is the third event the third resurrection event where you have unbelievers being joined with their bodies it says that the, you know the sea will give up its dead Hades will give up its dead so the, all these people will now come and stand over there before the great white throne and god will judge them and he will give them different degrees of punishment and they all will be put into the lake of fire so Hades was like a temporary holding place uh, hell was a temporary holding place for all the unbelievers but the permanent destination will be the lake of fire so these are some of the things that we could see regarding the end times um and of course these things will be covered in greater detail in the second year you know when you would have an entire course on this uh, subject so i hope you know that gertrude's doubt was clarified in the whole process of this explanation yes yeah, sister i heard it yes thank All you so much okay So yeah, if if anyone has any doubts, you have two minutes to raise your doubts. Otherwise, we can actually close with a word of prayer. So, I think we're just waiting for the class to get over. All right, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much for being with us uh, the last four months. So oh Lord, Lord, even as this is the first year batch. people who came oh lord to this institution with a desire in their heart to know more about you to draw closer to you to meditate on your scriptures and um and get to know you in more intimate detail that was the dream with which oh lord this first batch people uh, first year batch people came to this institution and lord you have been with them you have taught them you have walked with them many of them oh lord have grown in you spiritually uh, their desire and hunger for you has increased now lord i pray that even as you as you take them into the second year 
that lord your hand of blessing would just rest upon them oh lord prepare them for greater things lord even as they go for their break let it not be a break from you let it be a time where they would prepare themselves for what you have awaiting them in the second year let the second year be a time when they will move more in the spirit when they will be able to serve better they will be able to achieve greater fruit they will be able to bless people and and be of greater benefit to the kingdom i pray oh lord that you would do this for all those who would be stepping into the second year and lord we also pray for those who have just taken up uh, a certificate course this year and who will now move into other areas of ministry so lord they may no longer be continuing at apc but lord even as they are going out into your kingdom work you have plans for them so we pray oh lord that you would open doors for them oh lord the next step that they are supposed to take in their life open up the doors for that to oh lord speak to them about those things so that they will know what they are meant to do and i pray that they will be able to walk into those things with great confidence and be able to accomplish much for you oh lord we commit all of them into your hands oh lord bless them watch over them prepare them for the next step and lord we pray that on that day when you finally come back we will be able to share in your glory because today we have chosen to share in your suffering we pray oh lord that we will be people who will always be faithful and sincere uh, so that one day we will be rewarded for what we have done thank you lord in jesus name amen amen and thank you